Good morning. Welcome, friends. Welcome to worship. Welcome to this time and welcome to this space. It is Rose City Park Presbyterian Church. I am Liz Levitt, current pastor here, and I'm so happy to be here with you. You are welcome in this space and you are welcome in this community. This is a place for you and God is present here with you. We are here today in this physical sanctuary. We are also on YouTube. We are one body that worships in these various ways. And God welcomes us all and makes us one body as we worship. Isn't that cool? Kind of an excellent side effect of the spirit that we are drawn together, even worshiping in different ways. This space that we are sitting here in, we who are gathered here in the sanctuary, does sit on the ancestral lands of the Chinook, Cowlitz, Clackamas, Kalapuya, and Atfalati people, and we honor that heritage as often as we come together. If you are gathering from elsewhere, perhaps you want to take a moment as we start to honor the history of the land wherever you are. And wherever you are, let's just start this morning by taking a few deep breaths. How about that? Never a bad idea. Help us be present here and help us connect to the one who gave us breath. This month we are exploring the theme of rest and how we can reconnect to the unhurried God even in this busy world. That can always start with our breath and breathing together. Because here in worship we're also sort of outside of time, right? We're present in God's time and the here and now. And we're also trying to figure out how to draw that sensibility into the rest of our lives. We're doing that in song and in silence and in word. And I hope that whatever we do and however you choose to participate this morning, you can make that connection to the deep well of the sacred that is peace and grace and rest. So when we're ready, and you can keep deep breathing through any part of this. If that's all you do the whole hour as we come together, that will have been a fruitful thing to do. But when we're ready, for those of us that would, I would invite us to go ahead and sing our refrain that will invite us into worship. The words are printed in the bulletin. Just stay right where you are as we sing this first verse, inviting us to find God's presence in the quiet center. is responsive and the words are in your bulletin. Spacious God, we come today hoping for tools to sweep away the stress. Let us make room for you. Nudge us in this time of worship to seek the things that really matter. Help us to claim our own selves as a holy sanctuary where you dwell. In the name of Jesus, who invites us to wholeness. Amen. Friends, we'll continue our worship with song. Let's lift up our bodies or our spirits either way. Stand on our feet or uplift our hearts. We'll sing together. Morning has broken, number 664.
So typically right here you would be expecting to have in your bulletin a prayer of confession. And we're still embodying that practice, but we're kind of reimagining it just for this um, series that we're doing as a time of letting go. Doesn't that sound nice? I think all of us would like to have a time of letting go. A time when we set down things that we do not need anymore. A time when we set down things that are weighing us down. You know, always in confession, we are letting go of regret for the past. We're unburdening our hearts. Let go of our sense of ourselves as being perfect and unneeding of forgiveness. We let that go. We breathe out what needs to be released as we say those words together. And we breathe in God's forgiveness and assurance of healing. And so I would like you to invite uh, you to go on that journey with me. But I'll speak the words this time. And you're invited to just let your heart be quiet. We'll start with just a few moments of silence. And I'll say it's okay not to try to find words to fill that silence. It's also okay if there are too many words. Just find a stillness as maybe you call attention to your feet on the floor or your hands in your lap, your breath in and out. Maybe you settle into the fact that there is nothing expected of you right now. There was nowhere to go and nowhere to be other than here in this moment, in this stillness, knowing that that is enough. And when you're ready, I invite you to just listen to my voice as I offer these petitions. Spacious God, we need your forgiveness and restoration. For the times when we have run ourselves and others ragged, forgive us. For the times when we have asked of ourselves too much or too little, forgive us. Help us find the right tempo for the right times, O oh God. Help us to be gentle in our learning and growing with ourselves and with others. Help us to step back when our pace of life threatens our connection to you. In this moment, as we open our hearts, let us hear your promise. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. God, we know that you do not ask us to destroy ourselves in order to please you, but rather that you invite us into wholeness and restoration and peace a promise which you offer through the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, our brother, Savior, and friend, whose life was an offering of forgiveness for all. And God's peace is also yours. That's something that we offer to each other as a gift as many times as we gather together. And today I want you to just imagine with me for a moment before we share those words and signs with each other. The last time you felt that everything was all right. Think of a time when you felt everything is all right. We've been living in an era of immense anxiety for years on end now. I just want you to touch base with maybe a time when you felt that everything was safe and okay. 
Because that's the deep peace that we're inviting each other into when we say these simple words that may get very accustomed to us, but we say the peace of Christ, that's what we're offering to one another. So I would say to you now, in that spirit, may the peace of Christ be with you. And let's take a moment to offer words and signs of that exact peace to each other. If you need to stand up and move around, you can do that. We will call you back when the time comes to stop. Peace to those gathering online. Peace to those here. Let's greet one another. to God's peace, there is a limit to how long we will allow you to tell it to each other in church. <laughs> I've told you that the summer is a time when we want to be trying out some new things, and here's something that I'm suggesting that I'm hoping will actually become um, kind of a habit, but I would like it to invite us, and this has several functions, I'm not sure whether I should disclose all of them. Um, I would like to invite us to learn to welcome our children forward with a song. We tried one last week. I think that was a little too complicated. We picked something a little bit easier this time. Uh, in, in my imagination, in the ideal world, we would be saying, oh, peace, 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 peace. And then we would hear Heidi playing this and we would think, oh, it's time to settle down and welcome the children forward. I don't know if that will ever happen, but you are all very intelligent people, so I think we can figure it out. But we're going to sing this song, and as we're singing this song, hey, kids, you guys can come up. It's called God Welcomes All. How about we how we try that out? I want to show you this cool thing. Have you ever seen one of these before? Yes. Oh, you have. Oh, okay. What is this? I don't even know what to call this. It's kind of a glitter. It's a globe. It's a globe. It has some kind of like a costume where it's a jar. It's glitter. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
violence to respond to conflict, and peacemakers look to make sure they know if people need help. So that was a pretty cool week, don't you think? And I think we're going to have to fill those who weren't here at Legaya, fill all the adults in. But one of the funnest things, that funnest is not a word, one of the most fun things that I think we did together was not only use appropriate English grammar, but also sing. And so I thought a really cool thing that we could do to share with our friends who could not gather with us at Kid Camp is to show them the song that we learned. Now, this has a lot of components, and I'm not totally sure they're all going to work, but we're going to have faith. So I want some of you to gather up here, and we're going to teach the congregation. Lagaya, you can come too. I know you're a real fast learner. I think you're going to have this by the end. We're going to come up here, and we're just going to teach some the congregation and see if they can learn as fast as you do the uh, lyrics. Except, oh, we can leave our shoes on. We can leave our shoes. I know. Let, let's let's go ahead and yeah. Um, we're the the lyrics and the hand motions to passport to peace. Now, do you think these these people know how to clap? Why don't you practice clapping and show them? <laughs> All right, good. Now, um, what if, what about when we say here, there, anywhere? Here, there, anywhere. What about um, God's love? God's love. What about round the world? <laughs> what about just down the street? Um, okay, how about we refuse to hate and fight? How about we speak up for what is right? How about we talk it out? Listen well. I hope you are all watching because I'm going to be watching you to see if you pick this up. We will share God's love and offer help. Now, how can we, how can we show them to make new friends and to say how we feel, to offer a hand or share a meal like we're eating? How do we ask for help? Sometimes we say, hey, help, 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 help. How do we join in God's story? How do we join in God's song? Okay, now, here's your favorite part. Sometimes God's way of peace is saying sorry. Can we do sign language for sorry? Sometimes God's way of peace is saying stop. Sometimes God's way of peace is asking for help or letting our anger drop. I don't know if you're ready, but okay. So I'm going to invite Rebecca and Bobby to come up. We're going to actually put our feet solidly on the ground. We don't want anyone to be mortally wounded while we're doing children's time. So here are the, and the lyrics, hopefully, are on the back of your bulletin. If you don't want to sing along, at least help us along a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to, let's say, a prayer for technology. And Rebecca, are you ready? Because it's going to start right in on it. And let's go.
because I didn't see them, but I hope that they did. And so <laughs> I want to say a blessing to you for going out to continue to be peacemakers in this world. And I think it is time for you to go to Sunday School with Nancy. So we bless you. Thanks for sharing that gift with the congregation. Please pray with me. In times of weakness and hour of need, yours is the strength by which we carry on, the shoulder we rest our heads upon. When our load is heavy and too much to bear, yours are the arms stretched out to help us, the grace that we depend on. In times of weakness and hour of need, your voice is heard. Come, find rest. This is grace divine the path we tread to wholeness of body and spirit, the path that leads to you and for which we offer our praise. May your word be such sustenance for us today and may hearing it provide us the peace we long for. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew a teaching from Jesus about the rest that God offers us. Listen to these words of scripture and in them the Spirit's word to you. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks Thanks be to God. to self I should not be jumping all around I'm like out of breath from singing and hand motioning but we did have such a great time at our kid camp last week Um, I hope that was just a little snippet for you we sang and we danced and we crafted and we learned about all the continents in the world and we put on skits and we studied the Bible and we did mission work and we ate the most amazing snacks pretty much at any church children event in the history of Christianity (laughs) And it was a really joyful and rewarding week. Mostly because it just felt really special to have that time together with our kids, right? Helping them connect to each other and to us. More than children's moments or coffee hours allowed, it felt important and like something that was strengthening our whole church community. So let that be a plug for you when we make the call next year for participants, young and old. And let me also say along those same lines, if you have at any point uh, recently or, or in the past felt discouraged about the state of the world, I don't know who would ever feel that way, but if you have felt that way, try spending a week listening to young kids jump up and jump around and sing about how great God is and how we're going to make peace together and watch them learn to care for their neighbors and I guarantee it will uplift your heart. And I really want to thank all the volunteers that made it possible to do that and all the families that participated with their little ones. But I also want to say, man, I was tired by the end of the week. Were any of our other volunteers like a little bit tired by the end of the week? Like, woo-hoo, my Friday afternoon? I felt it took a lot of energy to do and to lead all that singing and dancing and playing and crafting and serving and eating and everything. Even with young kids of my own at home spending all day in that mode, you know, (laughs) was like a totally different rhythm than I was used to. And by the end of the week, I was totally spent. I kept waiting for Friday to come, which is usually my day off, and I realized we had already had Friday, and now we're like going full bore into the weekend. But it reminds me that our lives do have a particular rhythm. 
you know, our lives as we lead them, have a rhythm, have certain cadences and patterns that our days follow, just like a song. And then when those change dramatically, it's really noticeable, right? Like if everything's going well, often we find a comfortable rhythm for our living. We say, okay, I can kind of do this. But then when things start to move differently, maybe they move too fast or all of a sudden too slow or not consistently enough, we feel that. We get a little bit uncomfortable, right? Kind of like singing a familiar hymn too fast or too slow. We feel like, we're okay, okay, you know. And actually, God is really concerned about the rhythm of our lives, too. God is really concerned about that. You may have not thought about it quite that way. But the way of faith is very tied up with not only what we are doing, but also how and at what pace we are doing it. If you read any part of the New Testament, this becomes rather obvious. So much, excuse me, the Old Testament, so much of the Old Testament is talking about just the schedule of things. It's like listening to a preschool teacher. Okay, kids slash Israelites, the plan is we're going to work for six days, and on the seventh day, we're going to rest, okay? Six days of work, one day of rest. One, two, three, four, five, six, then seven is rest, right? Now, if we're on day five, what does that mean? It means today and one more day of rest, and then, right, and then the day of rest. So, right, it's amazing. So much of it. And broader than that, the first five books of the Bible are also chock a block full of instructions of cadences for the rhythm of the year. You know, on this certain day and this certain month, we're going to take a break from our harvesting, and we're going to go over here, we're going to celebrate for this many days, and we're going to go back. 50 days after that, you're going to do it again, but you're going to fast from this and feast on that for this many days and this many more. You know, when you read it totally out of context, it doesn't make a huge amount of sense until you realize that this is setting a rhythm for the life of a community together. There are even plans in the Old Testament for what to do with the rest of the century. Right? You're going to be invited to live in one certain way and take servants and take debts until the 49th year. And then we're going to do a total reset. We're not going to do any of those things. We're going to go back to the beginning again. Like It is astonishing how much of Scripture is taken up with these concerns and with guidance about how to structure our time so that our connection to God and to the earth and to each other is very evident. And I think that the New Testament passage that we just heard from the Gospel of Matthew is a bit about that, too. Now, the broader context of this selection, I know there are some biblical wonks out there that want to know this kind of stuff. The broader context of this selection is this. The chapter of Matthew begins with John sending messengers to ask Jesus, are you really the one that we've been waiting for? The systems of oppression against which John had been preaching and advocating had not yet fallen away. So he's having some doubt and confusion in his own heart. Is Jesus really the one? Is it really you, Jesus? Have you really come to bring God's kingdom, or should we keep waiting? Because when I look around, everything looks very much the same. And the passage continues with Jesus saying, Yes, it's me. And look around. Maybe the earthly powers still endure, but the blind also see. And the lame walk. And the poor have good news brought to them, for Jesus says, wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. We've got to think about, to a working people, Bearing on their shoulders the heavy and inequitable burden of the empire's oppression, Jesus offers an invitation to imagine a different way, a way more well-fitting and comfortable for their dignity. Rather than a painful, relentless pace for your lives, he said, let's explore the way of life that God intends, where the yoke is easy and the burden is light. Now, I recently read a new commentary on this passage, which gave me some fresh insight about this very familiar selection of scripture. How many of you knew this as Ellen started reading? Oh, yes, this is the thing where the yoke is easy and the burden is light. So really, the word in Greek, krestos, doesn't, easy is not a great translation. Really, it means something more like 
manageable. Sometimes it's used to mean kind, but mostly it means manageable. So here, when you're thinking about the yoke reference, sorry, we're getting a little bit of feedback here. When you're thinking about the yoke reference, it's an indication that the yoke for the oxen is not so much easy as it is well-fitted or appropriately adjusted for that particular ox. And I think what it means here is that the way of Jesus is meant to be a good fit for us, not too cumbersome and certainly not painful. Now, as we talked about last week, we have this really insidious idea that shapes a lot of our culture, and this is a common side effect of empire, for us to believe that our only worth is our output, right? that our only worth is what we accomplish rather than who we are and how we live. And that toxic paradigm certainly causes a lot of troubles for us including often disrupting what might be a natural, or could we say holy, rhythm for us. <laughs> I think we are hearing some music playing in the background. Or maybe just me. Okay, we were. I felt like I was being swept back to VBS. Like, hold on, I've got to think of the hand motions. We're ready to go. Um, so this, this idea, right, that our output is the only valuable part really disrupts a lot of things. It, it ignores that there is a balance needed between work and rest and fasting and feasting and celebrating an ordinary time. I think this insidious idea is what makes us question the value of creative work in our midst. I think it's part of what makes us underappreciate the work of caretaking and child rearing. I think it's also what causes us to question our purpose when we naturally slow down in our later years or in periods of illness and healing. Because the question is, well, what are you even accomplishing? But that's not the question that Jesus wants us to ask, right? The question Jesus wants us to ask is, are we going at the right tempo for this season of our lives? You know, I love this poem by Brian Doyle, a poem uh, entitled, Poem in Which My Mom Goes to Get the Mail. Are you willing to hear this poem, Poem in Which My Mom Goes to Get the Mail? Poem in Which My Mom Goes to Get the Mail, which is not at all as direct and straightforward as it sounds, mom being past 90 and wielding her walker like a sleigh. Starting in the bedroom, she cuts past the couch, up the step into the kitchen, past her older husband, down two steps into the yard, and then under the basketball hoop toward the mailbox in the street. All told, Odyssea has traveled 40 yards, let's say, and an idiot with a timepiece would note that it took her about 15 minutes and some serious effort. But the idiot, like her husband at the table, savors her grace and guts in the matter of the mail. She loads it all into the cloth bag attached to her walker and turns toward home, not unlike a beautiful ship heading to harbor. There are more moments of silent grace and courage than we could calculate in two lifetimes. It used to make me sad that I would miss so much, but now I'm delighted to see what is right there to see. Even better is the knowledge that you know just what I mean. You know, for me, this is a poem about the rhythm of life. Did Brian Doyle's mom once go a little bit faster to get the mail? Sure she did. Should she go faster now? No. There is something beautiful and courageous about her going exactly at the right pace for this season of her life, and I think it's helpful for all of us to think about what is that for us, to allow ourselves to ask, what is the holy and right rhythm for our lives. And of course, the answer is going to be different for all of us. I have contemporaries who are not comfortable unless they are working two full-time jobs, coaching their kids' soccer team, and running a small farm in their backyard. Now that would be grueling for me, and I honestly don't know how they do it or if they ever sleep, but for them, that is the cadence that makes them feel most alive. I have older friends who take two naps a day and read a mystery novel for at least four hours, and that feels just about right for them. And that's okay. But I think the interest in this question about rhythm is what faith requires of us. 
Not are we doing enough, but are we doing the right amount? And are we doing it not just because it feels good, but because it's the kind of life that God wants for us, the kind of life that is well-fitted for us, the kind of life that makes connecting to God possible? You know, like we talked about last week, if we're hurrying, we start missing out on opportunities to connect with God. Now, if that's not enough for you, if you've already progressed very far into thinking about the exact appropriate and holy cadence for your life, let me add this to your recollection. I think justice requires that we think about whether everyone in our community is able to ask and answer that question with some degree of integrity, right? So justice requires that we look around, look around our own internal community and look out into the community around us and ask, are there people among us that are not able to establish a healthy balance for their life of work and rest, of action and reflection? Are there people for whom the structure of our culture, our economy, is making that question unavailable to them? And if so, how do we work into our rhythm some advocacy for and present with, presence with their struggle for justice? Are there some among us who feel their life tempo has become too slow? And can those ones add in some additional activity, activity offering respite to others overwhelmed by their responsibilities? Now, of course, these are questions that are relevant to us as individuals and also to us as a church, right? Are we able to balance our life together with appropriate rhythms of work and rest, of engagement and withdrawal? Do we make room for those who need to take time out to heal and rest and then welcome them back with joy? Do we share the load so everyone can move comfortably through this life and down this spiritual path together? Can we tolerate seasons that are generally more busy and balance them with seasons that are more open and light? You know, I love this little example here of this thing that I showed to the kids because I think it's exactly a metaphor for how we know that we are embodying holy rhythms uh, together as a people, right? When all of us are able to move at the right tempo and in that way create a holy harmony that is beautiful and in that way honors and glorifies God and the dignity of each and every one. So I'm just grateful for this last time that has invited us to think about that. I'm grateful that I will be taking it a little bit easy this next week after a lot of singing and hand motions. Um, and I'm grateful for this invitation in scripture that asks us whether the pace of our lives is one that feels sacred and that can be in relationship with God. So I offer that as an invitation to you, and I offer those words in the name of the God who created, redeemed, and sustained us always. Amen. We're going to respond now in song. This is the words of hymn number 683, which are printed in your bulletin. The tune is number 450, although it will be familiar to you. Why do we keep doing this, Pastor Liz? You keep saying this words with that hymn. We're running into some copyright things. Things are a little bit different out in the world when we record them and then rebroadcast them over the internet. So sometimes we have to get a little bit creative to make sure that we're stewarding the creative types in our midst who have, who have made all of these hymns and arranged all these things. So we will be singing the words here. Heidi will be our capable guide. Let's continue our worship in song. <laughs>
We come now to a time of prayer where we let go of our worries about the things we can't control. Where we name for each other and for this whole community our worries about the future. Lifting those things up to God who holds us close and knowing that God is empowered to be present with and within us in all of those times and all of those places. I'm going to begin with actually the message translation of the same scripture passage that we heard today. I hope it will help us kind of sink into an awareness of God's presence with us and God's journey with us in prayer. So, so let's be in that spirit together. God, your scripture says, hear this invitation from Jesus. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? And come to me. Get away with me and recover your life. For I will show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn from the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. And God, in these moments, we do bring our prayers to you. We bring our tiredness and our worn-outness, our burned-outness. We bring our longing to be with you. We think about the places we need to recover our life. We think about relationships that are in need of restoration. We think about bodies we love that are in need of healing. We think about places in our community that have no rest from violence and from addiction and from a lack of resources. And so God, these prayers are part of the way that we walk with you, that we commune with you that we try to learn by being in your presence the unforced forced rhythms of grace. So God, help us to know your presence with us in these moments, in the prayers we have spoken aloud, the prayers that we are brave to share with others, and also the prayers that remain in the silence of our hearts. We know that you receive them all. We know that you meet them all with grace and with your spirit of wholeness and love. We want to keep company with you, God, so take these, our offerings, take them into your hands, and be in them and in us. Help us to trust your love, always, as we have learned about it in the person of Jesus, whose name we use to seal these prayers, and whose words we use to close as they were given as a gift to us to say to you, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as often as we gather, we acknowledge that there are, there is one spirit, but many different types of gifts. There are some among us who can sing, and there are some among us who can pray, and there are some among us who make the world's most amazing snacks, and there are some among us who can lead tiny people to make kind of complicated crafts in a very short amount of time. There are a lot of wonderful gifts in this community. And this is just a reminder and a celebration of all those things when we take this moment. This is also the time that we acknowledge that the ministry of this congregation and its ministry to the community continues to be supported by your financial giving. Even though no plate passes by you in the pew, we know that you are still faithful stewards in a rhythm of contributing to the church, sharing what is yours with all. That happens on the internet. That happens in a little um, bowl in the back. That happens coming in the mail. All of those ways, all of the different ways that we share what's in our hearts and our hands with the broad community um, is a blessing for this place. And we ask that we might have the wisdom to make it a blessing for this whole world. So we just take a moment to think about that and to feel thankfulness in our hearts for it. It's also the time when we would have traditionally brought all those things down. So you can imagine some kind of symbolic 
um, procession of all of those gifts and all of the crayons and song sheets and, and uh, uh, grilled salmon and yeah, right, yes, we had smoked salmon this week at VBS, um, jealous, and all of the things, imagine that all those are being brought forward um, to God as we lift ourselves up and sing the doxology with the words printed in your bulletin. <laughs> but just so you can hear them here live. Uh, these are our announcements. Um, one is, didn't all that stuff I said about kids camp sound super fun? Yes. yes, well guess what? This is great news for those of you that are not kids. We have something called retreats that we go on that also involve fun and creativity and food and singing and we have two of them coming up in the fall for men and women. Uh, we are still open for registering for those. Um, we hope that you will choose to do that. This is not only for our own edification, but also, like I said, uh, a way that we build up our church family. So please find out about that. Talk to me or someone in the know and register. I understand that we have some things coming up for Family Promise. So this is our transitional shelter. We are supporting another church where families will be housed the week of July 24th to whatever is the end of that week. I can't think of it right now. We have a lot of our... Um, volunteer slots filled, but we still definitely need a couple more folks to help out. So if you could talk to Linda or Rebecca in the back there, uh, maybe this would be being present during a meal, offering some support for kids, volunteering to bring some supplies. Uh, that would be a great thing to be doing upcoming. I feel like I'm, I should just stand very still. This is a <laughs> message from on high. Um, uh, what else do I want to say about this? Our first Tuesday, coffee and cookies. That's a midweek opportunity for fellowship. That's going to be on August 2nd. Note that change of day um, to avoid conflict with other events that are happening. Anything else I should be thinking about? Someone wave to me very noticeably right now or else I'm going to move on. Let's move on. It is summer and a wonderful time when we're taking a break from some of our regular happenings. Um, oh! right after this. We would like to have fellowship together. If you are sitting right here, you can just go right over there. There's some coffee, there's some cookies and things happening. If you are uh, joining in the virtual world, you can click as soon as this ends right over to our Zoom fellowship. I think I will be in here this week. Next week I will be joining on the Zoom, so if that is where you are, please choose to connect with your friends that way. We want to maintain a connection with all of you. I think that is all I have to say, so we will, uh, I I'm going to depart after I give you a blessing. We're going to sing the last refrain of our song after I do, then we can just stay seated for the post loop and then we'll enjoy some refreshments together. So let me just say this blessing to you. As we maybe take one, can we take one last? I feel like I'm out of breath. I don't know why. Too many hand motions today, but let's let's do that together. And let's hear these words. May the tempo of your journey from here be just right. May you seize the day, but also learn to savor the moment. May your life be the one that you live and not just watch passing by. And may you be reacquainted each and every day with the unhurried God who is calling you to dive deeply into love, knowing that that God created you and loves you and goes with you on the way. Amen. Amen. 